Family Theater presents Mitzi Gaynor and Lyle Betker. Hollywood, the Mutual Network in cooperation with Family Theater, presents God in a Red Scooter, starring Lyle Betker. And now, here is your hostess, Mitzi Gaynor. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives. If we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families and peace for the world. Family Theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, God and a Red Scooter, starring Lyle Betker as Ed. Sleep is beautiful. Sleep is a soft hand smoothing the frowns and frets on the tired faces of men. Sleep is a mother hand rocking the cradle of the world, rocking it softly, rocking men and women and all the little children to sweet silence and peace. That's what sleep is. Do you want to know something? I pity the man who does not know how to sleep. Consider little Eddie. I love children like Eddie. Eddie knows how to sleep. Before he went to bed, he was having a talk all by himself down there in the garden. This is the way he spoke this afternoon as he sat dropping pebbles into a milk bottle. Know what I said, God? Know what I said to Daddy? I said, God did hear me. That's what I said. And God, remember when I said... Please give me a red scooter like Stevie and Tony's got? Remember when I said that about the scooter? Didn't you hear me, God, huh? Didn't you? Look, God, I got lots of pebbles. Whole million. See what I mean? You see why I love little children like Eddie? He wanted a red scooter, went to sleep dreaming of a red scooter. Did he get the scooter? Well, I'll have to tell you the whole story. In a manner of speaking, the story begins with grapes. There. From this hill, you get a pretty good idea how it looks, Jeannie. How oh, the vines are beautiful, Ed. Nice dark green. Here. Let me hold Eddie for you. Be careful of his back, Ed. He's so wiggly. I got him. Is that our land all the way to the road? Yep. Straight oh. clean to Route 99. When will the grapes be growing, Ed? Oh, three years. Takes at least three years. You know what it's going to be like down there? What? Well, they're going to be out there on the wire trellises, those grapes. They're going to be hanging thick and heavy near the redwood stakes. And when the harvest comes, we're going to be packing in, well, well over 200 tons of the best red emperors in California. Mm. It's almost like a miracle, Ed. Yep. Eddie will be three years older when we start picking our grapes. Yep. It takes time for kids and grapes to grow. These plans, these husband-wife plans spoken in sunny places are delightful, invariably delightful. But I must repeat, I pity the man who doesn't know how to sleep. Listen to him. I don't know. Maybe I made a mistake. It's a risky business. It's a gamble putting all your money into grapes. This man is worrying, mind you, at one o'clock in the morning when he should be asleep with his wife and babies. You'd think the gentleman might allow himself the gentle privilege of getting tired. By one o'clock in the morning, you'd think he might yawn and go to bed. Why doesn't he stop fretting? Why doesn't he relax, poor fellow? I pity the man who doesn't know how to sleep. 
You're not getting enough rest, Ed. Now, don't start fussing again, Jane. But you're losing weight. Eddie, grapes aren't everything. Not if you're going to keep losing your health and everything. That's what's worrying you? Yes. Look, Jeannie, every cent we own is in those grapes. And right now, this minute, I figure we got over 230 tons in those vines. They're ready for the lug boxes in three weeks. Now, if anything goes wrong with those grapes, Jeannie, well... Well, it's going to put an awful big dent in things. Nothing's going to be wrong with the grapes, Ed. Yeah, a lot of things can go wrong with them. The trouble with you is... You haven't enough faith in God. Now, don't go into that again. Maybe if you got down on your knees once in a while... Listen, sta- Jeannie, you do the praying and let me look after the grapes, will you? That's the way it is with some people. Their heads are forever spinning plans and projects. You'd think Edward might have a little more confidence in me. You'd think he'd stop worrying for the space of a quiet sleep and let me look after the grapes. I have a way with grapes, with vines, with branches. Understand me, I'm not against plans and projects. I find no fault with the sweat on a man's brow. Labor is a magnificent and courageous thing. I'm talking rather about something that is more courageous than labor about confidence, about trust, and faith in me. I like the man who sleeps. I love the man who, like a child, can rest easily in the arms of my providence. But not so with Edward. Edward is too full of plans, as if the plans of men were merely the plans of men. Listen to him. Now look, Campbell, I'm ready to start now. Those grapes can't wait. Where are the pickers you promised me? We're coming up the valley as fast as we can, Ed. Don't blow your top, man. You got enough pickers for me? All you need. Only give me time. How soon do you figure to make it? We'll be cutting your vines by the 17th. I'll guarantee that. Okay. Only you make it fast. Fast as I can. I like vineyards. Vineyards and the fruit of the vine, thick clustered grapes all bursting black and purple in the harvest time. These are among the lovelier aspects of my creation. I bear no grudges against vineyards, having regard for the littlest grape. But once in a while, by design, clouds will gather, for reasons sufficient to the ultimate purpose of things. I gather a breeze at Burbank and scoop a cool breath from the high Sierras. Northeasterly, my gales go playing with canyon dust, with the sea sands at San Diego. And quite suddenly, quite perceptibly, there is mist in the Midlands and in the Valley of San Gabriel and out around the mountains and down from the mountains, down around the flatlands of San Fernando. Nor is it any surprise that there is mist also in the eyes of a woman in Fresno. It won't rain, Ed. Don't keep staring like that out of the window. You heard what it said on the radio. But that's just mist. You know how it is with mist. They, they come and go. It'll be dry tomorrow. The grapes will be dry. Wait and see. Listen. It's only a little flurry of rain, Ed. Listen. God won't spoil everything by letting it rain now, Ed. I know he won't. Oh, God, don't let it rain. (laughs) Yeah. God won't let it rain. Oh, Eddie, don't let it hurt you. Three days. Three days to harvest. Look at it tonight. You work for years, prune, cultivate. You put every cent you own into grapes, and what do you get? Wash out. Man ain't supposed to cry. (laughs) Yeah, a man ain't supposed to cry. Believe me, I hold no grudges against vineyards. I like vineyards. 
But more than all the vineyards in the world, I like man. I love man. I know man well. Yet never do I cease to wonder at him, capable of so much, of kindness, of charity, of sacrifice. And yet so often, incapable of hope. All things you can ask of him at times, save this, a little faith, a little confidence. It was so with you, Edward. It was so with you those nights. But Tony and Stevie's got scooters, Mom. I know, Eddie, but you don't want a scooter. I want a red one. Maybe on your next birthday you'll get one. But Tony and Stevie's got scooters and... Oh, and... no, nah, no baby stuff. You're a big man now. You just pray to God, and next year he'll send you a scooter. God, send me a scooter tomorrow like Stevie's got. Red one. I don't want to wait till next year, God. Hurry up and send me a scooter. Did he hear me, Mom? Hello, Ed. Daddy, did God hear me? What are you talking about, Eddie? I asked God to send me a scooter. Did he hear me on account of it's my birthday tomorrow? I wouldn't know, son. I wouldn't know too much about that. It's a red one. You tired, Ed? Yeah. Maybe God left it in the yard already. You've been giving him ideas about birthday presents? He's been asking for that scooter for over a year, Ed. You know that. Well, tell him to stop asking. Ed, you... You've changed so much lately. Sure. I know enough now not to go around asking God for scooters. Maybe I should ask him for a rebate on 26 acres of slipskins. Oh, well... Well, supper's ready. I saw Campbell today. We're ready to pick in a week. My second harvest. It'll be a good one, Ed. Maybe. But I'm not counting grapes till I get them off the vine. I'm only banking on red emperors, Jeannie. Not red scooters. Look at those grapes piling up, Campbell. Those are big lugs. Great crop. I'm going back home and pick up Jeannie and the kids. Gonna set them up there on that hill and let them look at a real harvest. That's worth looking at, ain't it, Campbell? Jeannie? Oh, Jeannie? Got a surprise for you and the kids. Hmm. Wonder if she's lying down again. Hey. I knew I'd find you in here, Lazy Bones. Jeannie, I want to take you and... What's the matter, Jeannie? Tired, honey. So you don't look good. You don't look good at all. Maybe I better get Doc Hanley for you. W wait a minute, Ed. It's funny. Somehow I've always had a feeling I... I'd be lying here like this. Talking here like this telling you that sooner or later... That what are you talking about? Ed, I'll be leaving you for a while. Now look here, honey. You're just run down. Doc Hanley will fix you up in a jiffy. Come here, Ed. Sit on the bed. What? Now look at me. Yeah? Do I look scared? No, you don't look scared, but you do All look as... All right, now listen to me. The sheets are in the closet downstairs. And the kids' laundry, you, you'd better send it out every week. Mrs. Abel... Jeannie, I... what are you talking about? <gasps> Ed, maybe you'd better start praying for me. You just don't leave me alone, Eddie. Don't leave me alone. Just keep praying for me, Maybe we'll still take that trip someday, you and me. We'll go first class, huh? All the way to Holland, see the tulips, and kids with the wooden shoes. What about it, Doc? As far as I know, and remember, I'm only one doctor... There's nothing much that can be done for Jeannie, Ed. All right. I'm going to get her. Doc, I'll get the best specialist in this country if I have to. 
Go right ahead, Ed. Oh, by the way, you can go in and see her now. She's conscious again. Hello, Jeannie, honey. Hello. Hey, you're looking pretty good, Jeannie. Your face is... Well, you're still beautiful, honey. Hi, the kids. Good. Listen, Jeannie, I was just talking to Doc Hanley and... I know, honey. It's all right. Jean, I'm going to get you the best specialist in the country. Ben? Yeah? I asked you to do something for me once. Remember? Oh, yeah. Okay, Jeannie. You asked me to pray. Not that way yet. All right, now look. If I have to kidnap a half dozen of the best doctors, I'll do it. You're going to get better, Jeannie. You hear me, honey? You're going to get better. You'll be out of here before you know it. Excuse me for barging in like this, Doc. What did you find? Well, they're doing everything possible, Eddie. You'll have to be patient. Yeah. That's what everybody says. Be patient. Why don't you go home and rest? Get a little sleep, huh? Sleep? No, not now. I can't sleep now. Are you listening, God? I don't know the words you're supposed to use, but... But, God, it's from the bottom of my heart. I'm praying for Jeannie, my wife. I can't lose her, God, not now. We got kids. Three kids. And we're trying to make a go of it with grapes. Now, you gotta hear me, God. You gotta make Jeannie well. Please, God, I'm, I'm asking you from the bottom of my heart. What's her chances now? Sorry. I think you'd better be prepared for the worst. You mean there's no chance? She's getting weaker. I'm sorry, Ed. I see. I understand. Okay, doctor. What's the matter, Daddy? Oh, nothing. Mom's sick, huh? Yes, son. Why don't you ask God to send Mom home, huh? Want me to ask God for you, Daddy? Maybe God's got cotton in his ears, Eddie. Cotton? Yeah. You can't hear so good with cotton in your ears. He can hear me. That's so? all? Yep. Once he didn't hear you, Eddie... When? You remember when you asked him for that scooter? Yeah. Red scooter. Yeah. Well, God didn't hear your prayers then, Eddie. Yes, he did. God did hear my prayers. Eddie, come over here, son. Up on my knee. Now, what did you say? I said... God did hear my prayers. That so? What did he say to you? God said... He said no. Sometimes God says no, huh, Daddy? What's the matter, Daddy? What's the matter, huh? Hello? Is this the residence of... Yes, yes, doctor. What's the news? Well, we wanted to let you know that you're... Hello? Hello? Doctor? Doctor? Operator? I've been cut off, operator. Get me Mercy Hospital. The line's dead. Stay in the garden with the kids, Ed. I gotta go to Mom. Something for me once. Remember? God Almighty. 
Maybe. I don't know. I don't know how to pray to you. I tried, Jean, so help me, I tried. Oh, you can't die, Jeannie. Not alone. Not up there in that room alone. You can't die on me, Jeannie. Sometimes God says no. Huh, Daddy? All right. All right, God. Listen to me, please. Sure, I wanted Jeannie to live. When... Well, when you love somebody, you don't want to see them die. You want to have them... You want to have them close enough to put your arms around. Okay, maybe I didn't want her to... Maybe I did want you to say yes. Just like I wanted you to say yes that first harvest. Sometimes God says no. Huh, Daddy? All right. And sometimes you say no, too. If... If that's the way it's gonna be, well... All right. Only listen to me now. I don't want Jeannie to die all alone. Without me. Hear me, God. I can take it. I can take anything. Only just don't let it be all alone for Jeannie. I'm asking you, God. Honest to God, I'm asking you. Trouble, honey. Well, you're smiling at me, Jeannie. You're, you're looking at me and, and talking to me. I'm really feeling much better today. Come put your arms around me. Stop looking like a baby. Oh, honey. Maybe... Maybe God is saying yes. Jeannie, maybe he's saying yes. The night tonight is beautiful over California. For the first time in a long time, a tired man sleeps. Resting at last in the shadow of my hand, he sleeps. I might have said no. I have said no to some of my loveliest children, my best beloved. But know this always, Edward, there are times when my refusals are necessary to a plan you cannot understand. The little Eddie, being wiser in his innocence, seems to understand. That storm upon your vineyard, the storm that drew your curse, was blessing to a thousand other Edwards in pasture lands parched by the drought 600 miles to the north. Tragedy, the tragedy of today, is but the pruning and the preparation of a lovelier tomorrow. Yes, there are times that I have said no, as many fathers have said no to their dearest, their best beloved children. But tonight, tonight, Edward, I have said yes. Oh, night, rest lightly on the tired eyes of the man. And concerning little Eddie, <laughs> listen to him mixing his prayers tonight. Our Father, who art in heaven, Lord is with thee, and blessed is the fruit, and, and give us this day our daily bread, and ever and ever, amen. Send me a scooter like Stevie's got. I tell you, I have seen all the beauties of my creation. There is nothing so beautiful as the small face of a child. The small lips of a child fumbling with prayer, getting it mixed up, getting it tangled, sweetly muddled with sleep. Listen to him. A red scooter, huh, God? And all the while, the soft fingers of sleep, smoothing his eyelids, closing them easily. Red. 
We had Scooter. Oh, God. All right, Eddie. It will be a red scooter. I have willed it, Eddie. A red scooter. Now sleep, Eddie. Sleep. This is Mitzi Gaynor again. In everyone's life, there is an interesting story. A story that tells not only what has happened to us, but a story of our doubts, hopes, and desires. Our personal life story. And in each one's life, there is a reaching out, a seeking for happiness. All of us long for the joy that comes from friendship and kindness and love. We all seek for peace and understanding. Would it not indeed be a better and more wonderful world if in every family there could be found true love and understanding and joy? There are many influences that in one way or another can turn or shape our way of life. But the most important influence in our life is love of God. It is the basis of our love of neighbor, the inspiration for our tolerance, for our faith in our fellow men. It gives us the sublime power to rise above petty difficulties and differences, it brings to our homes and children a true appreciation of the purpose and meaning of life. And the simple expression of our love of God through family prayer brings the most wonderful blessings on our homes because the family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you transcribed God and a Red Scooter, starring Lyle Betker. Mitzi Gaynor was your hostess. Others in our cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Alice Backus, Peter Votrian, Bill Forrester, and Bill Lally. The script was written for Family Theater by Timothy Mulvey and directed by John T. Kelly, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the Mutual Network, which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of state, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week when Family Theater will present... West of the Pecos, starring Peter Lawford. Walter Brennan will be your host. Join us, won't you? <laughs> Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is Mutual, the radio network for all America. <laughs> <laughs>